Okay, so now we're at the sewing machine getting ready to sew the pleats in our drapery panel. This is the top of our panel with our buckram, and you can see where we've marked our pleats and we've got our pins in the center. First thing we're going to do is we're going to fold the fabric so that these two marks match up. We're going to take the pin out and then I like to use a small ruler in here to try and make sure my lining and fabric are all in place inside this pleat. Then I'm going to take it to the machine, make sure it's where I want it. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. So our line is lined up with where my needle is. And I'm going to back stitch, reverse, and then go forward. And I'm going to sew down to where the end of my buckram is, right down here, about four inches. And then I'm going to reverse again to lock that stitch in place. I'm going to lift my needle up, and I'm not going to cut my threads. I'm just going to go ahead to the next pleat. And I know this is the center of it because that's where we put our pins. Let me get it straightened out here. Here's our next two marks. So I'm going to match those up and take my pin out again. And then I'm going to use my ruler to make sure that everything is laying flat and smooth inside the pleat. And then get the pleat lined up again where I want it. I'm going to reverse stitch and then again sew to where the bottom of the buckram is now i'm going to continue sewing the rest of our pleats in this panel before we get to putting the pleats into our panel, I wanted to show you some different pleating styles that you can use for your panel. This first one is a three-fold pinch pleat. There's three, the three folds, and then I've hand tacked it right under the buckram in the front. The second pleat is a two-fold pinch pleat. So just like the name suggests, there are only two folds. And again, it's tacked right under the four-inch buckram. This is a goblet pleat, and it looks kind of like a goblet glass. That's why it's named that. I've tacked it at the bottom, but instead of folding the top, I've left it round. And then I, it's a good idea to put something in the top of the goblet to help keep the shape. You can use a small piece of foam or batting. This is a small piece of inner lining flannel that I had laying around that I put in there. This next pleat is called an inverted pleat. So instead of sewing our pleat out, so that we have a fold out on the face side, you actually sew an inverted pleat so that the lining is out instead of the face fabric. And then I have tacked at the top on either side to keep this these edges down. This is popping up right now, but once you put a drapery hook in here through all the layers, that will hold the center part together. But it's kind of a nice tailored look, just a little bit different look for a drapery panel. These next two pleats, I used a two inch buckram instead of a four inch. This first pleat is called a Euro pleat, and it's folded in three folds like our pinch pleat was, but instead of being tacked at the bottom, it's tacked at the top. And then the last pleat we have is called a butterfly pleat. Again, I've used the two inch buckram here and folded it twice and then tacked it right under the two inch buckram. And you just kind of let the, the pleat fold or fan open so that it looks like a butterfly. These are six pleats that you could use, but there are many more. These are just the most popular ones that I've used. Now that we've got our pleats sewn, we're going to clip our threads. Didn't stop and clip each thread as I was sewing the pleat because it's actually faster to clip them all at the same time. And now I'm going to show you how I fold the pleat to make our three-fold pinch pleat. So we make sure we've got a fold at the top, and then I hold it with two hands with my fingers and press down. 
so that this top part is in the center between the other two folds. And then I lift one fold up and then the other fold. And I really like to crease that. I'll show you again on this one. So I like to flatten it down first, hold on to the top pleat or the top fold, press down to the center, and then come up on each side with the other two folds and really crease that. Once you've got all, all of your pleats folded, I'm going to show you how I hand sew right below the buckram tack the pleat together. You can sew on a sewing machine the pleat right in here under the buckram, but if you've got a home sewing machine it may be hard for you to sew through all of the layers. And I personally I really like the way the hand tack looks on the front of the pleat, so that's what we're going to do on these. Again, I'm going to use a hand quilting thread. I'm going to use the white to match the white in the fabric. I'm using a long darning needle again, and I've double threaded it. I'm going to use two threads. So I've got both threads knotted together at the end. First, we're going to start inside one of the first pleats. On the inside, not on the outside, on the inside so that our knot is hidden. And I'm starting about a quarter of an inch away from this top fold. I'm going to pull that on through. You can see where my knot is, but once I fold everything back together, the knot is going to be hidden. Now I bring the thread over the front of the three folds, and I come over to the second side, about a, a quarter of an inch away from the fold again. And this time I need to go through all three layers of fabric. and pull as tight as you can get that. I'm going to come over another second time, go through all three layers, and one more time. Through all three layers, pulling tight. Now on this side, I'm going to bring my thread back over and I'm going to start the process of making my knot. First, I'm going to take a little bite of fabric and then I'm going to take another bite of fabric. Pull my thread so that I've got a little loop left and put my needle through the loop and pull that tight. So that's one knot, and I'm gonna make one more knot. I'm gonna take another little bite of fabric, pull through so that I've got a little loop left, put my needle through it, and pull tight. Now to kind of hide this knot and this tail that I'm gonna get after I cut the thread off, I'm gonna put my needle through the knot, and then I'm gonna come up to the inside of one of these folds. It doesn't really matter where, but I'm going to pull that through and then I will cut the extra thread off. That tail is, is hidden and our, even our knot looks pretty good. And I'm going to continue folding my pleats and sewing the rest of my pleats together at the bottom of the buckram. I've got all of my pleats sewn now, and I wanted to show you where the seam ended up right next to the pleat, which is where we wanted it and why we spent so much time figuring our pleats and spaces. You can see the seam is right along here, and then the seam for my pleat is right next to it. So when the pleat is laying face up, you really can't see the seam at all. Now we're going to put our pins in the back side of our drapery panel. We're going to start, this is actually the overlap, the three inch piece that we put on the leading edge of our drapery panel. And we want the top of the drapery pin to end up about a quarter of an inch down from the top of the drapery. So I know to do that, I need to come down about 
5 eighths of an inch. For my pins, that's about what I need to get the top of the pin at a quarter of an inch. So I make a little mark with a fabric marker, five, 1 and 5 eighths inch down, and then I put my pin in. And it's got to go through the buckram and everything, so it can be a little hard slide in. Once I get it started, I like to use my ruler and just bring it on up. So there you can see it ended up about a quarter of an inch from the top of the drapery panel. After we get our overlap done, we're going to start putting pins in each of our pleats right here where the seam is. So again, I'm going to measure down one and five eighths, make a little mark. And this time I'm using a fabric marker that does disappear because I'm going to put my pins in right away. So you stick the pin in right at the mark, right in that seam. And then pull it on through. And in the seam, it's easier to pull up and you don't usually need to use the ruler. So let's do one more. We're going to mark down one and five eighths and then we're going to put our pin in. I'm going to continue putting the pins all along the drapery panel and then here at the end, where we have our return, I'll put a drapery pin in there too. 